secretary of the branch c anil banpal and uh, and today's resource persons c nirjan bhog ji and the senior professional colleagues past chairman my dear mc members and the professional colleagues ladies and gentlemen a very good evening and welcome to all for this webinar so today so see ye nirjan ji has given a opportunity for us very useful topic for all of us day in and day out we are doing this tally and using the tally and uh, this is preparation of the financial statements everything that we are doing it because we are using the tally for sunday data sunday data etc for for scrutiny also this using this tally is very useful and we thought that it is a very very useful topic for all of us really it increase the scrutiny coverage because manual means only to certain extent and there is a possibility of the errors of the scrutiny but it increase the scrutiny of the coverage this through tally means automatically it will reduce the errors and means significantly and reduce the scrutiny time because reduce and give reports and uh, preparation of the gst or 9 and 9c also is very useful i think so so all these are very very practical today seminar and very useful to all of us and uh, sir such a topic is given by our nirajan sir we are uh, we welcome you sir and thank you for your uh, gratitude yes. and we we grateful to you sir really wonderful yes. and the opportunity given to us so yes. my dear friends so within a short time he has uh, given the consent and we agreed for this really it is useful topic for all of us now before going for these uh, deliberations i request our uh, ca sridhar ji uh, andor sridhar kind attention of andor sridhar please introduce our sir narendra sir good evening dear members very pleasant welcome to the pleasant weather and excellent topic i take this opportunity to introduce narendra jok He is a qualified chartered accountant. Actually, his profile is very short, but uh, the topic given to us is very long and useful to us. He is a he has a qualifications DSA, CS, and MCOM. This is chartered accountancy qualification. He, he is into practice since Jan 2011. His main areas of practice are loan syndication, tax audits, company audits, internal audits, rare compliances. and other uh, professional areas he has founded ndq technologies private limited in the year 2018 and he also launched ledger vision in april 19 he is currently serving more than 400 ca firms and more than 2000 users he we can say proudly that he is assisting so many professionals through ledger vision his main aim is ease of doing the audit With these few words, I introduce the speaker to the August gallery. Over to the speaker, sir. So, shall we start, sir? I will share my screen and let's start with the presentation. So, so there are two softwares from my side right now for presentation. uh one is ledger vision uh, which is focused on automatic tally ledger scrutiny so right now it is working on tally but we are updating the software for other platforms like sap some prominent erps are there zoho facebook etc right now it is working on tally only and another one is ledger vision which will be helpful for preparation of schedule 3 balance sheet the output will be in excel format 
and with all the required updates uh, from uh, schedule three so and uh, with all the few formulas and uh, linking will be uh, will be there so nothing is hidden from our side it is just like excel based sub, uh, balance sheet prepared by our uh, our staff or our self only so uh, there are many softwares in market which provide you output in you know crystal reports or pdf format but our usp our software provides output in excel format so there are two softwares so as sir introduced uh, our company is indigo technologies private limited which is a fintech company and we launched it uh, uh, around august 2019 so more than 450 cfr firms are using right now my software so when it was started there are only 22 reports now with the help of the members users they are, they have given valuable suggestion now there are around 67 reports and it covers majority of the areas uh, so let's see what is the laser vision so currently what are the problems with the practice basic and main important uh, problem with the current practice is resource crunch so not only for us, even from client side also, this is the complaints raised that no trained or experienced candidates are there as an accountant or for, from our side as an auditor. So that is a major problem. Secondly, there is an inconsistency of standard of audit documentation from many of the auditors. Again, there are stringent time then we have to fight for extension of the due dates. Whenever there are huge data, we have to complete everything by stretching our office, office working hours. And as such, there is a gap between our transaction volumes and fees. So effort to reward ratio is very less. There is no uniformity in ledger scrutiny and related view. And with the inexperienced accounting team from client side, it is it adversely affect our working. So whenever we try to install any kind of discipline, when accountant gets changed or new accountants are there, we have to again train them, we have to get them back on the uh, track to uh, provide us with required information from their side. So that is the problem. Then there are many regulatory actions as such that there are increasing non compliance cases against like CFR deficiency in audit. Then increased disclosures are there, like Tower 220 is there, Schedule 3 is there. And again, from client side, we normally must have experienced all of the years that we follow up clients from April and they end up with providing data to us around September or mid September. And again, they expect something very important, a high standard of. Um, services at 11th hour. So it is very, you know, we have to stage our office hours to complete the work within due date. And from team expectation also, we can see the professionals. They also want professional growth and high quality of work. They also want reasonable remuneration with work life balance, etc. So something should be there which will automatic many of the processes. You must have uh, experienced that most of the, our office work is Excel based and it is clerical one. And it takes around 70 to 80 percent of our staff's time. So whenever there are automation of these kind of uh, working styles, uh, it will save a lot of time and energy, and it will uh, increase our effort to reward ratio also. So why ledger vision? So it provides you a high quality base level ledger scrutiny for books of accounts in tally. Now it works on tally ERP nine as well as tally prime. Even it works on education mode of the tally also. Uh, there are around 67 reports which covers your GST audit, filing, statutory audit, internal audit, component audit, etc. And it prepares, it takes care of each and every watcher. So 100% scrutiny is there, no sampling, etc. is there. Okay. So it will provide you thorough, uh, thorough analysis of the data. And what are the key benefits? There are more than 220 rules right now. It covers GST, TDS, company law, tax audit, statutory reduce, car, etc. It will significantly saves time. For example, when I provide you demo, you will see there are around 4,000 entries. It will take around one, 120 seconds to complete the scrutiny. It is so fast. Again, as I said, it is a hundred percent checking is there no judgmental calls. So uniformity of reporting is there and thereby it increases accuracy. So basically you don't have to depend on your skilled employees or senior articles. Again, you don't have to take the review of work done by them also. Okay. So everything is done by software. So you can blindly uh, uh, go with the report generated by the software and it will save you a lot of time and energy also. Now you must have seen the tally is very, very flexible. There are multiple style of accounting. The accounting style depends upon the knowledge of the accountant or requirement of the business or the areas of business. So 
there can be customized voucher types from accountant side that that are handled by the software. Now, tally is so flexible that it it, it, can, it may allow even accountant can open the fixed asset ledger under bank group of banks and tally will allow. So it is very flexible, and even our software also takes care of this kind of grouping. Again, for running the scrutiny, you don't have to maintain the standard tally grouping. Any kind of tally grouping is taken care by the software because software is very, very flexible. It is a configurable one. Even you don't have to activate the inbuilt tally features for TDS and GST. And it handles multiple GST TDS accounting itself. For example, in case of TDS, you must have seen either the TDS category wise grouping of TDS payable ledgers are there, or even only one TDS payable ledger is there. Or in case of GST, also there can be multiple. The break of ledgers like input output are separately kept, then even input output are bifurcated on the basis of rates. Or even only there are three, there can be only three ledgers CGST, SGST, and IGST. So all kind of accounting styles are taken by care by the software. Now, what is the magic behind? So software is very, very fast. It reduces time from minutes. For example, I can provide you an example for last week only we have completed the scrutiny of around 350,000 vouchers and around 72,000 ledgers within three hours. Normally to complete 100% check-in, it will take around 20 days for eight to 10 people, but it has completed everything uh, in three hours only. So this is very, very fast software. Uh, again, this software is very secure because we don't record any kind of internet connectivity. It runs on your desktop. So whatever data pool by the software will be maintained on your desktop only. So data integrity and data confidentiality is maintained by the software. Seamless tally integration is there within the click of a button. Every software pulls everything. They just master stock item, cost center, the record, everything will be pulled in the system. Software is very scalable. There is no limitation of number of uh, companies of, for scrutiny, or you can have a scrutiny of any single tally company for any number of times. So there is no restrictions as such. Um, right now, there are 220 rules. And it is configurable. So if the default tally accounting is done, 90 to 95% configuration is done by done by software automatically. You have to manually intervene wherever manual intervention is required. For example, software is not able, able to identify the related parties. You have to manually tick mark the data and creators so that software will understand like these are the related parties or any TDS related declarations are there, then you have to manually tick mark. So there are four steps. Firstly, you have to pull the tally data then one time configuration is because one time configuration is very important because there are many things uh, from point of view of tdas gst or 40a3 34 etc so you have to pinpoint some of the things so that software will take care of each and every style of accounting and it will generate uh, valuable reports then you have to run the scrutiny and all the results are generated all the results are visible on screen also and every result is down downloadable to excel also so rule, there is an extensive rule engine which covers basic accounting principles, income tax, company law, GST related provisions and rules. So I will read out some of the uh, important re results from the uh, software, then we will go to the demo. So for example, in case of GST, uh, we check each and every GST voucher and there are multiple permutation combination of wrong accounting GST. There are errors of omission, errors of commission, wrong accounting, it is that there wrong rates are there instead of input output is maintained. So there are multiple permutation combination. Everything is taken care of by the software. Uh, then we provide you GSTR 2A and 2B reconciliation. Now we are not having any GST with a provider license. For, for the GSTR 2A and 2B reconciliation, you have to download .json files of 2A or .json files of 2B from the portal. And because we have pulled entire data from tally it is very easy for us to reconcile everything then we will get ready-made rsm report from our software uh, it will provide you category wise expenditure wise rate wise bifurcation so uh, identification of block rate is very easy then we go into the uh, ledger masters of the status and data then from where we can find out the duplicate gst numbers again as i said data because we are having entire data we will bifurcate data Rate wise, expenditure wise, party wise, so that uh, data preparation for G filing of GST are 9 and 9 is very easy. So, any kind of accounting style of GST, bifurcation of data is done 100% by the software. And again, for tax audit, it provides TDS scrutiny where no TDS or short TDS or excess TDS is captured by the software. Then, segregation of TDS data is there. We provide you expenditure wise, rate wise, and party wise 
TDS category based bifurcation of data. From where you can find out the disallowances for no TDS or short TDS and table number 34A. Again, we will provide some of the tax audit reports which is available from tally data like 43B, 216 SS, 216 asset addition, deletion, etc. So there are many reports based on accounting basics or aging analysis is there. No? Uh, cash related reports are there. Uh, even we check each and every data and creators opening, closing balances, their aging analysis, then accounting principles, pending it is. Now for finalization of tally uh, company, you need to see whether all interest and EMA entries are there, all income entries from investments are there, all drawing entries are there or not. And then pending finalization entries, uh, like provision, prepaid, reversal of opening entries, pending TDS, TCS, etc. will be taken care of by the software. Now, though it is showing upcoming, right now our software is providing you 194Q and 206C uh, reports also. Uh, MIS reporting and dashboards, uh, uh, that will be updated in uh, next month or maybe 1.5 months are there because we are working and testing. So if that, that uh, valuable um, facility will be there when the valuable facility will be there in the software. Um, I'm very much sure that you can provide uh, virtual CFO services to your clients also uh, at very low cost and with the effective manner. Then some sampling techniques will be there for audit material from based on audit modality. And this is the major feature we are working on auto update of the tally ledgers. And so tally ledger master is there. Now we are working because software is showing you all the problems and errors from the accounting and who is going to update everything at last minute. So there will be a feature which will automatically update the changes done by you. So you have to, the software will provide you suggestion that these are the problems you want to correct it in the tally. You have to provide the suggestions to the, uh, in an Excel file only and accordingly software will change the, or alter the vouchers from tally as well. So it will save a lot of time uh, for uh, which, which normally taken by the accountants to change everything in tally. And effectively you will finish your audit within a given duration. So these are the feedbacks given by the clients. Yeah, our software have helped in speedy scrutiny or some fraud detections are there or it has helped in even peer review also because standardized reports are there. Let's jump to Ledger Fusion and then we will start with the uh, reports generated from the software. So, Ledger, as similarly, Ledger Vision, Ledger Fusion also pulls data seamlessly from Tally. Now, data means it pulls opening balances, closing balances, debit, and credit total. Um, one time Excel based configuration is required and you will get every, every output in Excel format with all formulas and linking. It is very, very useful for Schedule 3 partnership from individual HUF. Now, Trust AOP BY will be updated in next month only. Uh, it prepares depreciation schedule as per company law or as, well, as per income tax also. Even we help you or we will calculate for you a deferred tax or current tax or max. So, the option is up to you. It depends. While preparation of balance sheet only, you have to select the option whether you want us to calculate deferred tax, etc. We provide you cash flow statement. We provide you hyper hyperlinks from where you can jump from balance sheet to notes or p and to notes and vice versa. So in all, it saves a lot of time and energy and standardized output will be there. Okay. So these are our contact details. Uh, uh, www.laservision.in is the website from where you can download our demo versions. If you want full version, you can contact me on this number and our office will provide you a full version for five to seven week for four to five tally companies so that you can try on your own, on your own tally data. And if you satisfy with the results, you can go for buying the software. So let's start with the demo. Now, this is the tally company. Uh, period is April 20 to March 21. Let's see how much data is there. So there are around 1700 ledgers, 1711 ledgers are there and around 4,292 vouchers are there. So we will scrutinize this tally company uh, with all the areas of the scrutiny and I will be showing you the, how results are generated. So let's open the ledger vision. So this is the, you can see this tally local host 9000. It is the gateway or it is the window provided by tally so that tally can communicate with any outside software. You can see in this client oblique ODBC server, 
some of the people must be knowing what is odpc server odpc server is the uh, in a simple language it is a windows given by tally so that tally can communicate with any other software okay so to configure this you have to go to this f12 advanced configuration and you have to change tally here practicing as both and enable odpc server yes now this 9000 is the default one but suppose the number is 10500 then you have to use that number over here then if you use 10500 over here software will pick up everything from tally so i will be showing you some of the configurations because configuration is it may take around half an hour but i want you to understand what kind of configurations are there so instead of all configuration i will be showing you couple of configuration so that you will understand how software things how the data is pulled how the code is written and how the outputs will be generated so before going for configuration let's let's pull the data from tally when you say pull tally data uh, you can see in background window software is pulling data on monthly basis it pulls ledgers masters stock atom cost center narrations everything now before pulling the data you have to keep in mind that so it's it has started pulling data now before pulling the data you have to see that the the period is matching with the tally suppose you want to go for only one month scrutiny then it you have to match the period in tally as well as ledger vision so here you can see i have matched the period it is from 1st april to 31st of march just like the tally so depending upon your audit requirement you can have a quarterly audit monthly audit weekly audit or yearly audit i am going for weekly audit and it is pulling data now it is on july month then it is on august month so it pulls data on monthly basis and the speed of pulling data uh, depends on two factors i mean one is how how much or how many ledgers and stock items are there and what is the size of your ram so whenever the huge data like 1 lakh 2 lakh entries are there it is requested to use uh, minimum 16 gb ram so that tally normally what happen whenever the lower ram is there then tally gets hanged if tally is hanged then our software is helpless because it is dependent on tally only so to tally needs to be uh, tally needs to be run smoothly for that purpose you need to have a huge ram so minimum minimum requirement of ram is 4 gb for 15000 20000 tally, tally accounting it is it is very compatible but whenever the data is heavy you you may go for higher uh, higher size of ram so we are now in march and software will show that it has pulled everything from tally so when the data is pulled from the software the message will be appeared okay, so message is there this is the message that showing we have pulled everything now as i said there is one time requirement of query so there is one time requirement of configuration now i will show some of the configuration and then we will run the scrutiny and we will explain that because there are around 67 reports i will try to uh, explain maximum reports so that you will understand the uh, pros and cons of the software so Uh, these are the category this is category configuration you can see the category mapping window at left side now there are 37 categories and these are fixed categories on which we have written our rules okay now if you click any of the uh, field in front of any category you will find that all the groups uh, groups from balance sheet as well as groups from pnl account now the whenever there is a default grouping software is automatically mapping everything so um whenever bank account is there it is automatically mapping bank whenever capital account is there now two three things you have to keep in mind suppose if now software is by, by default uh, uh, try to catch up gst related ledgers from duties and taxes but suppose if you have kept uh, gst input under purchases and gst output under sales then you have to guide the software you have to just say purchase and software will capture gst input ledgers from purchases similarly in case of tds suppose tds is kept under provisions then you have to go to this tds payable ledgers and then you have to see say that uh, instead of duties and taxes tds is kept under provisions okay as simple as that now there are three buttons available so that you will understand uh, so how to configure the software if you hover your uh, cursor on this help button you will get to know the instruction if you click this audio button you will get all the instructions um so that you will configure company without any errors 
because if there is error in configuration there will be errors in the uh, outputs so the perfect uh, for the perfect um, uh, configuration uh, you need you can follow this help button okay so let's jump to some of the important configurations then we will run the scrutiny i will be showing you all the areas how the software is helpful from tax audit gst audit etc okay so here software will capture whether the tally company is person huf etc and the state of registration in case of gst mapping it will capture which are the input ledgers which are the output ledgers which are the cgst hgst ledger what is the rate whether it is combined now what happen if the gst rates are not maintained at gst ledger then there are three options in tally uh, either rates are kept at expenditure ledgers or rates are kept at gst classification uh, level or at the stock item level from there it will capture if nothing is maintained in tally then software will run iterative calculation to capture whether correct gst entries are there or not similarly tds mapping is there so if you go to this tds software will capture the category uh, whether contractor is there professional is there. only thing is we don't consider uh, calculation of salary tds because there are no threshold limits like just like in 194c 1 lakh is crossing or any single payment of 30000 is there then only 194c is applicable as said there are no threshold limits for tally to be skip the uh, the sorry there are no threshold limits for salary tds so we have skip the salary uh, now let's jump to scrutiny we will run the scrutiny and i will be showing you the results also so we got it is a heavy data after automatically mapping everything in the background yeah so you can see there are multiple areas creditors debtors gst related ledgers prepaid expenses expenses and asset addition etc so there are multiple areas of configuration most of the things are done automatically like just i say in case of declarations received from your side you have to tick those creditors so that software will not check tds for those declarations if you know the related parties you can tick if you know the, whether the turnover of those parties are exceeding more than 10 crore in previous year you can tick now from gst number uh, software is determining whether um, whether the creditor is within state or out of the state suppose gst number is not there it will go through the entries and if the igst entries are there it will say it is a within out of the state if cgst sgst entries are there it will determine that it is a within state and also it determines whether the from gst or pan number whether it is company person it should but suppose nothing is there no gst no pan is there then by default we have determine or we have given the option of firm if you know it is a person you can change it or if you have whatever the case may be but why firm is chosen because we have taken the conservative view in case of 194c we calculate tds at 2% so such kind of smaller configurations are there in case of suppose only one tds table ledger is there in tally then you have to go to this expenses and asset addition where software tries to provide tds categories as expense by reading the nomenclatures of expenses and fixed assets because you can understand if only one tds table ledger is there in tally then it is very difficult for anybody to bifurcate data category wise and if you don't have bifurcation category wise you cannot provide or you cannot generate 34a table which is required for tax audit so from here so in the drop down window you will understand there are all the categories of tds and software by reading the headings only providing the categories but you can just go through if you find something wrong is you can add you can de delete the categories provided by the software you finalize the categories for all the expenses and then now in the uh, uh, liabilities group also there is the current liabilities scrutiny option is there from where it will prepare you a 43b table which is also an important table for tax audit now in the rules all the rules are tick by default by the software but currently our clients are using our software for monthly checking of gst or tds for for that purpose you have to just tick the gst and then software will check only gst related queries or if you tick only tds it will check only tds related queries so it is very important it is very helpful on month if you check gst and tds on monthly basis all entries are corrected on monthly basis current pay, correct payment will be done correct filing of returns will be done now let's go for the scrutiny when i say run scrutiny it will scrutinize all 4000 entries and 1700 ledgers in one go in background you will be seeing the scrutiny is going on and, and uh, over and above uh, there is a reconciliation of 
opening balances picture is there then jsta 2 into b is there uh, so we reconcile the before starting of audit normally what we do we try to see whether closing balance of previous year are matching with the opening balances now from this picture software will compare the closing and opening balance also and it will update the difference between closing and opening balance automatically it will capture all the closing balances and test automatically in the all the opening balances of respective business so in a way it will save a time uh, of updating opening balances in tally and you can start with the audit immediately whenever the due date is nearby you don't have to waste time in updation of tally so it is now running the tedious summary and then around 120 seconds 130 seconds it will complete the scrutiny so i have given the small tour of configuration because for understanding the report generated you you must be knowing what what kind of configuration was required to, uh, to get the informed results from the software so there is a logic from groups to we have the, the steps of configurations are from groups to ledgers and then smaller details of the ledgers like depending on the ledger master grouping etc so let's wait for some of, couple of seconds the data is heavy 4000 entries are there So output is generated in pass or fail options. Pass means correct accounting entries and fail means wrong accounting entries. Yes. So you can see only 129 seconds required to complete the scrutiny of 711 ledgers and 4292 vouchers. Okay. Now this is the overview given by the software that balance sheet is matching and now how many entries are passed and failed. So in case of GST, out, out of total entries, uh, uh, 1158 entries are passed and only 14 entries are failed. And in case of TDS, 19 are failed. So even excess TDS is also considered as fail entry. So if you go through this overview, you will understand the quality of data maintained by the client. And all you can go to results from here only. You can jump to results from here only. You have to just click the hyperlink and if you want to download, you can download all the results to Excel. There are five buttons provided over here. So one is download analy analytical results, then GST reports are there, uh, then tax audit related results are there, aging analysis is there, and additional results are there. So I will show you some of the important uh, results because all 67 results are not possible to show. So let's focus on important one like TDS scrutiny. So there are three results in TDS. One is TDS scrutiny where you will find out the areas from where TD, uh, TDS uh, related problems are captured. Now we captured TDS from eight to 10 areas like payment or advances to creditors, even payment to data. Like we have seen that in some of the cases, data is also considered as creditor. Then direct cash payment, direct bank payment, provision entries, prepaid entries, loans and advances, fixed assets. So these are the areas from where we have captured the TDS related queries. Now you can see the bill references, voucher number or voucher type is shown as any because we are working on totality basis. For example, in case of 194C, we see if the total of the transactions is crossing more rupees 1 lakh. If it is not crossing, then any single any single entry more than 30,000 is there or not. So this is the working style. Uh, in status, if you say fail, we so will get all the problematic areas of TDS. So let's see what software is saying about this. Alok Raj is Ranjan Singh. Software is saying uh, the value of total. Uh, total. Achha. So TDS category applicable is 194C. And uh, at that time, the rate was reduced. Now for this person, uh, the GST or PAN number may not be there. So software has considered 2% with the disc. And in 2021, there was discount of 25% on TDS rate. Now, from here, you are, you, you are not understanding, uh, you, you have understood that the party is there, but you don't understand uh, software is talking about what expenditure. So you have to go to TDS expenditure wise and you have to select the party. So this is the combination of both TDS scrutiny result and party wise summary. Suppose I go to this loop. 
so these are the areas now software is saying no tds deducted uh, for this so total amount of 48000 and 2200 now it is not crossing rupees 1 lakh then why software is saying tds is not uh, deducted let's go to this ledger to understand why software is saying so so if i go to this allok so you enter period and i go for column number 1 so software is saying uh, it is having software saying freight inward and earthing expenses okay so if i go to this freight inward a single entry of 34000 is there that's why 194c is applicable now for a single uh, creditor if, if you have if you go to configuration again you can see the freight inward and earthing expenditure is mapped for 194c only so we have we have taken the consolidated view we, have, we are working on totality so freight inward total and uh, earthing expenses total is 50000 or some something and any single payment there is a single payment of 34000 so tds is applicable but nothing has been deducted from the tally company so same kind of queries are there like in case of say again go to this audit fees so in case of audit fees software is saying uh, on 3 lakh rupees they have deducted only 20000 technically there should be 22000 so if you go to tally so this is how you will understand now this query generated on provisions like uh, audit fees payable is a provision it is under provision so i just wanted to show you that how the provision related queries are also captured by the software so instead of 22500 it has deducted only 20000 so less tds is there software is saying short tds is there so this is this kind of errors are generated now in case of tds expenditure wise uh, this is very very important uh, report from the point of view of tds you will get all the tds categories you will get all the tds aid applicable at that time you will get the tds ledgers used from tally you will get the name of parties and you will get the name of all expenses and fixed assets now there is a status given whether tds is liable not liable no tds deducted short tds there excess tds is there and all the expenses and fixed asset details are given one below the other so all the amounts are there again those amounts are bifurcated like tds liable to uh, expenses liable to tds or expenses not liable to tds and wherever the expenses liable to tds is there software is saying how much the amount of tds is applicable and what is the actual amount of deduction okay and whenever the actual deducted amount is less than the applicable amount software will calculate you this allowance at 30% right now and you can download this report to excel and if you use pivot table on this category config tds category column you will get ready made 34 a table which provides you category wise expenditure wise details of the tds so it is very easy to provide to find out the disallowances and the 34 a table let's jump to some of the tax audit related section like in case of cash sections software will provide you a ready made table where any single day payment has caused any limit like for example in case of 43 for transport charges the limit is 35000 but they have paid 39000 in a single day or 2690 they have paid cash to this arif kabir or uh, the deposit is given more than 20000 so 2690 tss st like single uh, single day cash receipt is there 2 lakh rupees more than 2 lakh rupees they have received the sales in cash so these kind of areas are captured you will get ready made table whenever there is a the sections are violated like 40a3 260 tss and st so you don't have to go to cash and see whether uh, and uh, work with the tally to find out all these kind of details now another feature is prob probable unsecured loans so what happen uh in many cases there is money lending or money borrowing transactions are there and there is a tendency to hide everything under data and creditors in most of the time some of the markets when a grocery huge grocery markets are there we are having a grocery market in pune there is this kind of tendency there and the tally data is enormous like 30000 40000 data creditors ledger are there now it is very difficult for auditor to find out this kind of hidden transaction from data and creditors so what we have done it is a suggestion given from any uh, one of the senior ca only so this is the list of debtors and creditors where only receipt and payment entries are there 
no purchases no sales okay no zevi also so you can go to the shortlisted list and if you find something suspicious uh, then uh, you can uh, have a discussion with the client and see whether any money lending or money borrowing activities are there if it, if you find something like this then you can get those ledger under 216 and sst reporting which is the duty of the auditor now related party transactions the related party transaction tick mark option is there in creditors debtors loans and advances and loans and liability from where we capture everything the ledger group ledger name from where payment or receipts are there bank or cash whatever the case may be voucher type voucher number date and amount now you must you can see the relation and nature of the transaction is not available because software is not that much smart enough to understand the relation with the tally company and creditor the relation between tally company and creditor or debtor whatever the case may be and the nature of transaction so you have to have a discussion with the client to understand the nature of transaction and relation with the party then statutory dues you will get statutory due related monthly table for esic gst tds pf ptrc etc even tcs also so suppose in case of esic payable in case of april software is providing you due date of april itself so it is not the due date for payment of april it is the due date of the opening balance means march payment is due on 15th of april the april payment is due on 15th of may and so on now there are two columns given so if the payment is before due date it will be shown over here if the payment is after due date it will be shown over here and accordingly software will see whether there is a delay or not and accordingly it will calculate interest etc now if i say one year you will find out whenever there is a delay so now what happened in case the open instead of 1 like 91000 or 19 like 13000 they have paid only 13000 rupees in this case so short payment is there that's why software has calculated delay so instead of 1900555 they have paid only 13000 so there are multiple reasons for delay or calculation of interest but accordingly the code is written software will calculate delay software will calculate you monthly interest if the delay is continued or non payment of interest is there then it will calculate you cumulative interest also now what happened it is suggested that we have came across the cases where actual payment is done very early but accountant has accounted for later dates so it is very it is suggested from our side while going through this report you must take the actual chalans and actual returns of the from the party because accountants may delay the entries and accordingly software will calculate the interest then 216 and sst table is there so if the gst or pan related details are there in ledger master those will be appearing otherwise the blank option is there then you can manually write down the details now what is the opening balance what is the closing balance whether the so uh, ledger is secured off or not that has been shown now some of the chartered accountants want us to provide details uh, for all the receipts and payments so how the receipts are affected whether it is from cash or bank or odcc or jvi what is the interest amount and how the payments are affected from cash bank odc system jvi and highest closing balance during the year so ready made 216 and sst table is there now for this company 206c or 194q is not applicable at that time but for the demo purpose i have selected the report so what happened if the gst number or ban number is there then the applicable rate will be 0.1 otherwise the 1% rate will be there and here all the data and creditors will be listed where transaction amount is crossing 50 lakhs during the year and we will provide you opening balance bill amount amount paid or received what is the tcs applicable what is actual tcs what is the tds applicable what is actual tds uh, what is the pending tcs and pending tds so we have given the, all the details you can then take appropriate action accordingly so after this we will focus on gst very very important reports so in case of gst on screen we provide only fail result but if you download everything to excel you will get all pass and fail results also now unlike tds here we are providing the voucher number and date also so because we are checking each and every gst entry now software is saying status is failed though gst amount is matching according to software the error is here ledger earning expenses is considered as gst not applicable still gst is paid so if you go to ledger master of the earning expenses you will see there is no gst rate mentioned it is mentioned that gst is not applicable still gst is calculated so software has raised the query you have to take appropriate action and in this case 
software is saying though gst amount is matching cgst hgst are applicable but igst posted now the name of the client is cloudtel india private limited mumbai now you must have seen that the, this company is registered in maharashtra only and the client is from mumbai only so there should be technically cgst hgst but software is saying igst is posted let's go to this client and see uh, the voucher number is 346 cloudtel mumbai so cloudtel mumbai is there so this is the entry if i go to this entry yes so software is saying instead of cgst hgst igst is posted now if i go to this ledger master you can see it is from maharashtra only address is from maharashtra so software has picked up the correct correctly that error is there instead of igst there should be cgst hgst entry so these kind of errors are there even in case of calculation also what should be the actual amount of, so you can see on 18000 rupees software is saying gst posted is not matching with the expected because the rate of gst is 9% so on 18000 there should be 1600 rupees of gst but actual entry is for 1200 rupees so this kind of errors are there whether there is input for creditors instead of input output is there or for data there is input is there so all kind of errors are captured by the software and then you can check on monthly basis you can correct the entries on monthly basis you can pay correct amount of gst or tds as the case may be and you can update the returns accordingly or you can have correct way to be reconciliation also now uh, there is a summary party wise so i can show this result in excel so that you will understand uh, in better way so there are some other results of gst but you will understand the concept now because we want to go for gst of 99c filing also the bifurcation of data is required uh, and so this kind of report will be there like party wise summary means you will get you will get all the parties one minute hello 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 oh sorry so there is a bifurcation you will understand that software is bifurcating data party wise gst rate wise amount wise etc hello hello okay okay so let's go into details uh, you can see Uh, software is showing all the parties now in case where there is a direct cash expenses or direct cash incomes then or bank expense or bank income then cash or bank will be considered as a party and bifurcation is provided like gst rate wise income and expenditure amount wise and again the bifurcation of input cgst hgst igst will be there and output cgst hgst igst uh, will be there Now similar kind of bifurcation is there for PNL wise, and I have added two columns over here. One is for GSTR nine, and another one is for GSTR nine C. So you can see in case of this bifurcation, there are direct expenses, fixed assets are there, indirect expenses are there, indirect incomes are there, purchases and sales are there. Okay, so accordingly we have bifurcated the ledgers. The GST rate, the PNL amount, and input CGST, HGST, IGST, and output CGST, HGST, and IGST. Now, why I have added these two columns? One is for GST nine, and one is for GST nine C. So, because there are requirements, like they ask for sales wise details of the CGST, HGST. So, you have to select only sales related ledgers over here. And now, for this company, only two rates are there: zero and nine percent. But suppose there are multiple rates, then you can have a pivot table on this gst rate column then you will get ready made details of sales sales wise and rate wise so you have to just copy and paste in the that gst r 9c now in case of gst r 9 uh they want us to provide details of total gst on services then total gst on capital goods and total gst on normal goods so i have removed income related ledger i have kept only Direct, indirect expenses, fixed asset, and purchases. Now there is a trick. Now how many? In this case, only fifty-five ledgers are there. But suppose the huge data is there, 
thousands of ledgers or hundreds of ledgers are there, then it is very difficult. But simple trick is that you have to read the nomenclature and go on writing whether it is service, whether it is capital goods, whether it is normal goods. Go on writing for all 55 times. Use pure table on this column and you will get ready-made data bifurcated between total GST on services, total GST on capital goods and total GST on normal goods. Okay. Similarly, uh, filling the GST, uh, in case of GST of 9C, there is a table number 14. Uh, in which there are 18 headings. Originally, when GSTR 9C was initiated from the government side, there were only 10 headings. Now they have updated the format. Uh, they want us to bifurcate data in 18 headings. Now, again, the problem there, there because we have 55 ledgers in the list and we have to club all the ledgers in 18 headings. So, similar trick you have to use. Now, in case of freight, ready made heading of freight is available in table number 14 18, from 18 headings. But labor charges is not the ready-made heading available in case of uh, table number 14. So, but employee cost is the heading available in that 18 heading. So you have to use that. So uh, I just wanted to say that you have to use matching headings for each and every ledger. Suppose any matching heading is not available in those 18 headings, then you can use any other expenditure. Go on writing for these 55 ledgers and use pivot table. Your GSTR 9C table will be ready-made, uh, readily available. Now, you must have seen this bifurcation of data is very easy. Only 120 seconds required to complete the data bifurcation. But somehow you have to manually intervene for bifurcation of GSTR 9 and 9C, but it will save your huge efforts of data bifurcation and time also. Now, there are multiple reports. When you download everything in Excel, you will get multiple reports. Okay. Uh, Main report is GST detailed report. If I read the headings, you will understand what kind of bifurcation is done by the software. So, first one is GST type, whether it is input GST or output GST, then month, okay, then entry type, then what is the ledger group, what is the name of the ledger, even GST number is there. This GUID is graphical user interface details, which is very, very important from our side to, if any problem is there with the software, then we can detect the entry from this GUID easily. Then voucher number is there, voucher date is there, status, whether entries pass or fail is there, whether GST is matching or not, that is there. All the related like supply or invoice number details, voucher type, which group of PNDL ledger is there, which ledger from PNDL of PCSL is there, uh, whether the GST is correctly applied, true or false is there. And again, bifurcated is input. Out. So basically, this is the mother report. Here you will get entire purchase and sales day book bifurcated what are the headings i have just read and from the from basis of this all other related reports are generated now uh, this company is not having uh, stock and advice accounting but suppose if stock and advice accounting is there then we will provide you additional reports i will just show the headings only that in case when the stock item accounting advice details are there then you will get what are the stock items used in the entry, what is the amount of, what is the build quantity, what is the HSN code, what is the HSN master, what is the stock item GST rate, and what is the actual GST rate entered in the time. So in detail, bifurcation and analysis of the data will be provided by the software. Then if you bifurcate GST related ledgers for RCM, because for RCM audit, there are multiple styles of accounting. In some of the cases, uh, you know, they check every, they work everything on Excel and they just file the entries, final entry in tally. Or in some of the cases, they may have a control ledger, control ledger accounts for RCM. And on the end of the month, they will pass the entry. So instead of going in the details, what we have done, we will be providing you a detailed monthly basis a table. So you will get the ledger name, the rate you have selected from the configuration, that rate will be appearing. And you will get the monthly RCM expenditure. Rate. So you have to just take the total on monthly basis and see whether same amount is there in tally for RCM. If any extra amount is there, that means the entry is wrong. Or any lesser amount is there, then again, it means the entry is wrong. So I'm not going into details of all the reports, but you will, I have shown you the important detail, details of GST only. In all, GST scrutiny is very easy with the help of software. Now let's jump to aging analysis, very important topic. Now in case of aging, we have tried to have aging analysis based on bill-wise accounting, but I can say even 80% of times we have seen that no bill-wise accounting is maintained by the client. 
and for remain, remaining 20 15 20% of time though they are using bill wise accounting style most of the time they have passed entries on on account basis so that is the problem our closing balances will never match with their closing balances so for forcefully we have to go for fifo based method so now there are two kind of aging analysis one is for creditors and debtors so in case of creditors we have used fifo basis fifo basis means what we have done we have taken the total of the payments and firstly we have deducted the opening balance and then all the bills in a chronological sequence will be deducted from remaining amount now any amount outstanding will be shown as the amount of oh, acha sorry i have not generated the report on this and then it is generating yes sir we can verify tcs as sir i have shown you the report uh, in the end of the discussion i will show you how you can verify the tcs we will be providing you applicable tcs and uh, actually deducted tcs so that you can compare whether there is a shortfall or excess tcs is there or not okay so now this is the uh, aging analysis for creditors okay, what is that mean okay so this is Let's jump to data. Okay. okay. So this is the aging analysis report. This is for data. This is for creditors. Okay. So we'll we'll discuss with the creditors because I want to show you uh, rule thirty seven also. So as I said, when we use before method, we deduct opening balance first, and then remaining bills will be deducted in chronological sequence. The outstanding balance will be shown whether it is in debit. Means extra payment is there, or whether any bills are outstanding, so it will be in a credit. The amount will be shown, and again, the uh, amount will be bifurcated in buckets: zero to thirty, thirty to sixty, sixty to ninety, and so on, so, uh, up to greater than one eighty days. And again, you will get voucher-related details because we want to reverse the input credit whenever payment is not made within six months. So. we will be providing you the details what you have to do you have to select all credit over here and number of days more than 181 so you will get a priority wise opening balances or bills with the dates etc where the amount is outstanding for 180 days or more and then you have to reverse the input credit with these details okay so very important report similar kind of aging analysis given for data also now there are analytical reports which are very important there are 22 reports so first one will be account squared off during the year so these are the accounts where debit and credit amount is matching and closing balance is zero so as an exception report there it is the requirement from one of, from one of the cs so that report is generated over here now asset addition deletion is there so very important report this is even a tax audit table also you can use this report as tax audit table you will get the asset name whether addition or deletion is there voucher number date and number of days now in case of addition we will calculate number of days from date of entry to 31st of march or in case of deletion we will calculate deletion uh, days for deletion from 1st april to date of deletion then you will get amount of the addition or deletion and you will get the narration as well then now this company is not going for bill wise accounting otherwise opening bill wise references will be shown now these are some of the ex exception reports like creditors with income entries or sales entries technically there should not be income and expense entries income and sales entries to creditors but whenever exception because this report is exception report these are the exceptions where income and sales entries to creditors are posted so you will get voucher number voucher type So even if JV entry is there, that is also captured by the software. Now voucher date and amount. Now creditors with receipts, those are shown separately. So these are the creditors where receipt voucher type receipt is used, and creditors are created in bank or cash or ODBC or CC is debited, and accordingly, the software is showing you the receipts to the creditors. Similarly, creditors having no purchases. This is also important report so that you can have a discussion with the client, the reasons behind why the purchases are stopped from these clients and so on. Similarly, debtors with purchases are there, so you will get the ledger group, ledger name, voucher number, voucher type, voucher date, and amount. So instead of income and sales, there are purchases or expenses entries. So these are the date of names only. Now 
data with those no sales again you can have discussion why sales are stopped with these data the data is having payment entries so for so certain payment is used and bank is credited to data okay now expenses through cash very very important one uh these are the expenses where cash component is there so expenses can be from direct expenses and indirect expenses of purchases now what we have done we have given the total amount of expenditure exact cash amount of the expenditure and difference between two is shown as others so this is the report required by some of the cs that expenditure through cash that has been given now some are asking us for giving the details of voucher level details also for this cash expenses we are working on that i will be updating this report and giving in detail requirement like there will be another report for for freight inward if this 65000 payment is there then what kind of uh, means voucher type voucher number voucher date narration all the details will be there so this report will be much more meaningful similarly we have given additional reports like expenditure comparison on monthly basis or expenses with no credit so what is the expenses comparison you can compare the expenses and see why there is a huge deviation like in transport in case of april zero transport amount is there suddenly it has raised to 39000 again it is zero so you have, you have to have a discussion with the client why there is a discrepancy in the details similarly you can have expenses with no creditors so these are the creditors where no expense entries are there then expenses with receipts so you know you can see these are the exception reports which will you will be getting ready made information now these are the expenses where no creditors are there other than creditors so deposits loans and advances cash bank odc but no creditor is there so these are the expenses having no creditors in here if i read the remaining nomenclature you will understand what kind of reports are there like expenses with receipt entries or fixed asset depreciation entries or higher discount you can decide as per your audit materiality you can decide the maximum discount as possible for the client client and if any higher discount is there that will be listed then income comparison is there so income from debtors are there income with payment entries are there no transaction during the year no transaction means opening the income from income with payment is not there for this company no transaction means these are the debtors having opening and closing balance same no no in between during their transactions are there again you have to take care we have a discussion with client that why no transactions are there during the year so this kind of analytical reports are generated it takes care of many areas of the scrutiny then cash related reports very very important report so basically we are showing uh, cash ledger wise uh, cash deposited in bank or cash withdrawal from bank and on monthly basis and so we are showing deposit in banks or odcg and withdrawals from bank or odcg so on monthly basis so far first ledger is petty cash there are 12 entries and uh, 12 monthly entries and then for cash book there are 12 entries so this is a basic report but important report is this one section 44 ab comes into picture with this report so suppose you are having a tally company with turnover more than 1 crore but below the threshold limit of tax audit then we request you to go through this report as per section 44 ab section says if your total tally receipts are more than 5% of the total receipt of the tally or your total cash payments are more than 5% of your total tally payment in this case we have excluded the contra entries okay so only receipt and payment entries are there so if the total cash receipts are crossing 5% of total tally receipts or total cash payments are crossing 5% of total tally payment then the tax audit is applicable though the turnover is less than threshold limit but more than 1 crore rupees so you have to go through all the tally companies wherever the turnover is more than 1 crore but below the threshold limit of tax audit then if the bank is in negative we will be showing that bank is in negative like suppose this is the current account okay uh so software is showing whether yeah this is very important current account let's uh ledger is credit during the following period software is saying on 15th october it is in credit okay so let's go to tally to see whether software is saying correctly uh, what is the name of the Zero zero five. I said zero bank zero zero. Current account is there. Okay. So if I go to the month on monthly basis, if I go to the month of October, 
and if i go for monthly details uh, sorry daily details uh, for daily breakup on 15th day i can see the closing balance is in credit now in case of cash tally itself shows it at uh, red in red color but for bank there is no facility as such so we will be providing you the details now why i am not showing this od account because it should be under loans and liability but it is kept under bank account so software is saying it is in credit technically it should be in credit because it is od od account but support it would have been good under um, loans and liability then whenever it was in debit software would have given the error accordingly again if negative cash is there that will be shown now in this case no negative cash is there then next important reports are data checks very very important so accounts with no gst and pan now here our update tally feature will come into picture so let's read the report first then i will explain how update of tally will work so what happened this is normally most of the times gst number or pan numbers are not updated in tally so this is the list of debtors and creditors where either gst number or pan number is missing no if you say account you ask accountant to update everything it will take too much time because very difficult task he, he has to go to ledger master update the number again come out of the ledger master again go to next ledger master update everything come out in that case error of omission mistakes are possible so what we have done right now we are showing the uh, ledgers where there is a gst or pan is missing but if you go to this update tally and if you download the ledger master okay Suppose I download this Ledger Master. Say I will download this to download some for your demo purpose. We will be providing you all the Ledger Masters with all the details. Suppose I go to this downloads. Okay, I will show you different reports on this one. Okay, now it has downloaded. Okay, so suppose I have, if I go to this Ledger Master, I refresh this. Okay, this is the report. All the ledger masters are shown in Excel only, so you will get to understand. Okay, now you can see the GST number is missing. Uh, who, what is the AS and electrical? Suppose I provide any GST number. Say I will provide any particular GST number for the demo purpose only. any number there is no requirement as such so it should be perfectly what what i will change everything from this number and so that correct gst number i will change this okay something is there wrong so suppose this is the correct gst number so very easy for accountant accountant can go on writing gst number over here i have selected this a and s electrical where gst was not there i can show this in tally also suppose i go to the ledger master of a and a what is it a and s a and s so this is the ledger where you can see there is no gst number right now okay so i will update you for the demo purpose i have i will save this file so i am updating only single ledger but accountant can update everything and let's update everything from for that particular ledger only so from downloads i will say open and software will automatically map everything so i was with the results now in background you can see software is updating All the ledgers, it will go through all four thousand ledgers and wherever required, it it will update all the missing. So you can update your PAN number, GST number, phone numbers, email IDs, addresses, whatever the missing from ledger masters. Now, if you ask any accountant to update manually, he will not go for updation. But with the help of this feature, you will update everything automatically. Similarly, you can see in this case, uh, there is a. Download option for uh, this thing uh, vouchers also. So whatever the suggestions from our software that GST is wrong or TDS is wrong or accounting entry is wrong, if you change the required 
required things, required suggestions in Excel only and upload into the software. It will update everything in time. Now it is in beta version right now because I am trying to update the user friendliness of the software so that it will be used for uh, auto entries in tally also like you must have seen that whenever there is a intraday trading details from the client it is very problematic you have to enter all the details in uh, in tally then all the details in filing software then you can file the return so suppose any auto update of tally and auto update in filing software option is there i am working on that only so if you enter everything in excel in a click only it will update everything in filing software as well as in tally so it will save the time uh, for this and filing of the trading related capital gain related reports will be very easy. Uh, similarly, this can be used for auto entries in tally also. Uh, you can change any entries, you can update any entries, you can add any entries, you can update your ledger master, everything. You can directly import a bank statement, you can place copy paste from Excel bank statement to here in this uh, voucher related details and it will update everything. So to basic motto is to save the time. Now we have to wait while software is updating everything. But because I cannot close this window till that update will be there, but we have to wait. So basic idea is to remove the time wasted in uh, clerical thing and ease of doing audit is the motto and dependency on skill staff and accountant we want to reduce everything. So there are 17 hundred ledger, so it is taking too much time right now, but we have to wait. So uh, I, I can explain some of the reports in Excel only, so that software will take time to update. I will be showing this report in Excel. So just to save the time. So we were in additional scrutiny reports. Okay. We were in data sets, correct? So that if the software has updated, let's go to let's go to that laser again. You can see the GST number is appear right now. Okay. So in this way, if you go for entire updation of your ledger master, software will automatically update everything. Okay. Now let's jump to other reports of data related things. So so from this you can update everything. Now there is another problem that duplication of GST number or duplication of PAN number. So whenever there are duplicate GST number, the code is written in a such way that any single GST number is used for more than one ledger. You can see this number is actually for Goati dealers. Again, it is used in Iron Mountain Private Limited or King's Seafair, Safety Wear number is used for SEO. So these are the problems. Now, with the help of auto update of tally feature, you can change this duplicate GST number. Whenever the GST numbers are correct, your 2 and 2B reconciliation will be there correctly. Again, duplication of PAN, PAN number is there. So same PAN is used for more than two ledgers. Duplicate vouchers, very important thing. Now, in this case, no duplicate vouchers are there, but duplicate vouchers means same narration, same party, same invoice, same amount. If everything is duplicated, then it will be shown as duplicate vouchers. This is the most important report for available purchase of and sale of asset. Now, I am having an internal audit of a company where on monthly basis there are 40,000, 38,000 entries are there. And from this feature, we have captured a staff welfare ledger where Honda Unicorn was presented to the uh, a son of any uh, some employee who has scored a merit rank in one of the exam. Now, because it is gifted to the uh, employee son, it has debited to staff welfare. But software has captured the word. Now, like in this case, you must have seen software has captured the word TV. So smart TV is purchase. Okay. Though TV is purchased, it is debited to purchases. Okay. Or in this case, the laptop is purchased, but it is debited to purchases. Now software is saying wherever whether it is purchase of asset. Technically laptop, uh, now the amount is more than 5,000. You can decide the threshold limit. In this case, this laptop is of more than 5,000. It is a 32,000 entry and it's 46,000 entry. So technically these are the assets, but they are debited to P&L account. 
Similarly, sale of asset is also if it is credited to uh, PNL accountant, it will be the error will be thrown by the software. Then you have to take active action. So I was giving you the example that software has given given me the staff welfare ledger where software is saying verify whether there is any purchase of asset. So I have gone into details. I have come to uh, knowledge that the Honda Unicorn is the bike which is gifted to the clients, uh, sorry, employee's son. That's why it is debited to staff helper. But when I go into details, it was registered in the name of company only. So technically, it is asset owned by the company. So I have asked them to capitalize everything. Uh, so these kind of errors are generated by the software. Very important thing. Now, how it is generating? Uh, we have given the in uh, uh, configuration only, in generic configuration only. Uh, there is an option that you can add or you can delete the name of asset. Like we have given pump or TV or laptops or bikes. There are multiple asset names are given. You can add or you can delete. Accordingly, software will read the narration. It will capture the keywords. It will see whether amount is more than given threshold limit. In this case, the threshold is 5,000 rupees. And it will see whether it is debited to PNL account or credited to PNL account. Again, it will see whether it is not the revenue expenditure or revenue income. Because we have, just like asset related words, we have given the revenue related words also. And intelligently software will decide and throw the query to verify whether these are the purchases of asset or sales of assets. So this will take you to the next level. You have to take care. We have to go for watching, see whether actual purchase of asset or sale of assets is taken care of or not. Even we can provide you spell checks option whenever there is spelling mistakes in case of ledgers or heads, etc. That will be there. Now verify creditors entry is very important thing. Uh, in this case, we have shown the status has explained only. We have not shown it is fail or pass because this can be a adjustment entry. So these are the entries which are against the accounting principle. Like in case of creditors, we are saying verify debit entries. Technically, there should be debit of purchases, input GST, direct indirect expenses, and fixed assets. Other than this, if anything is debited, like in this case, retention money is debited to creditor, then it can be adjustment entries. So we have said this as explained. Similarly, like debit entries, credit entries are there. Technically, there should be credit of cash bank, ODCC, and TDS to creditor. Uh, in this case, retention money payable is there. So we have shown this as explained. If you know they are regular entries, you can ignore. But if you find something mischievous or something uh, suspicious, then you can have a discussion with the client and you will find out the problems. Now, uh, there are some important. Achha, there is one feature from our side, keyword search. So just like uh, control F or what we use in our Excel or Word, same kind of feature there. Uh, this is the feature demanded by some of the CAs. So if you want to find out any expenditure of personal nature, uh, you can find out. Okay. So suppose I want to find out the word bill. No software has given me option whether to find whether in ledgers or groups or narration. I am saying find out word bill everywhere. I can select the period and if I say submit, I will get to know the details of the software will provide me all the entries wherever the bill word is used. So you can decide you can have word donation as well. So this feature can be used for prior period, finding out prior period items or personal nature items. So in this case, donation word is there in the ledger, but no entry is there. So instead of going through entire details of the tally, you can use this feature to find out the required details. Now there are three complementary tools. One is reconciliation of opening balance. So here now, because I'm not having two different companies, there should be two different companies. One is for previous year and one is for current year. Um, I am showing this feature on same company only. I will just say continue because there are many number of ledgers in this company. Now we have to take precaution for three points. One is you have to take backup of the both of the companies. You have to open the previous year company in this select old company field and current year company new select new company field. Now why you have to take the backup of both of the companies because software will update the opening balances in new telecom. That's why you need to have a backup of the original data. Uh, second thing is you have to split the tally company because if you don't split tally company, previous year should be split up to 31st of March and current year need to be split from 1st of April. If you don't split, then software will, suppose the current year company is, is not split company and it is continuing from 1st April 2016, 
now what tally do when we say update tally tally will go and change everything on 1st of april 2016 now because we want to update everything on 1st of april 2020 or whatever the current date of 1st of april then you have to split the company from that and second thing is though there are two different companies you have to open both the companies in same tally and then you have to select from the drop down over here now software is comparing all the 1700 ledgers and it will provide you a details whether now there are four kind of uh, uh, results are there if it, they, it is present in tally i can show you so that result is not there right now okay uh, what happened firstly software compares all the ledgers from previous year company with the all the ledgers of new year company so this is the result now because i am using same company the status is always that found in new company but suppose there are some of the ledgers which are we have added in the data while finalizing previous year tally company normally what we do we finalize tally company we send everything to the accountant of the client and ask them to update normally if they update everything correctly that is not a problem but suppose they have skipped to update the data then you will find out the status that ledger is not found in new company this means the accountant has not updated that ledger in new tally company you have to manually update everything so far you have to add everything manually right but with the update tally feature there will be a feature where software will compare the previous closing data and current closing data and it will provide you that suppose there are many entries which are uh, entered by the chartered accountant but uh, client is unaware of that then tally, with our update tally which our software will throw the entries not available in new tally data and instead of updating opening closing balance software will update the entries itself directly and that will take some time because it's a very tricky thing updation of ledger masters is very easy but updation of tally vouchers is very tricky we are working on that thorough testing is required then you can have suppose you have sent any data to client and if you want to save if any window dressing is there by client side you can use that tool also you can compare your data and data received from client and you can compare both the data software will throw all the entries changed by the accountant so those features will be there in update tally details no right now focus on this data so software if software is saying that ledger is not found in the tally company you have to update that ledger manually now software is showing all the previous closing balances and all the opening balances of new tally and whenever the closing and opening balances matching software is saying no but whenever there is a difference between closing and opening balance software is saying yes now if you select all years you will get the list of all the ledgers where there is a difference we have observed that new ledger in the company with the same ob nothing in previous year this we not finding the same mistake in the report same ob okay same opening balance but nothing in previous year this we not finding okay. but this, sir this will be taken care by the software because we are comparing everything no? so we will be comparing two tally companies and accordingly software will find out everything Uh, if any if any problem with there we can update accordingly acha so all yes means uh, there is a problem with the company with that previous closing balance is not matching with the opening balance okay so either you can download everything to excel and ask accountant to update everything if you don't have time due date is very nearby then you can simply say update now i am not going to update the tally because i am using same tally company for demo purpose i am showing software is comparing same tally companies closing balance with the same tally companies opening balance that's why i am not going for update but this will save your time and energy and you can start with the audit now for two year reconciliation you have to download a dot json files you have to select the correct period you can select the month or you can select the uh, depending upon you can select half year entire year or quarter what is the case maybe now you have to download the dot json files there is the option of downloading of excel files as well as dot json files but for for the software purpose we have we written our code on dot json files because it is a uniform uh, what is the problem with the excel files government may change the uh, com composition of excel files but in case of dot json files the composition remains universal in all the areas that's why you have used dot json files Now, when you download the dot JSON files, they are in zip format. Suppose you are going for entire year scrutiny, they are in zip format. In that case, don't go for unzipping in a one click. Use uh, 
uh, you have to unzip each file separately and provide a separate name. You can name it at April, May, June, or you can say one, two, three, four. Any chronological sequence should be there. If you unzip in all the 12 files in one click, then all the unzip files will get same name and software will get confused. So that is the important thing. Now there is a USB. Suppose you are having a group company having same GST number, then you can open all the tally companies in same tally and software will provide you 2A and 2B reconciliation for all the group companies in a single go. This will save a huge time and energy also. And you must have seen that most of the times accountant never punch in full invoice number. In that case, what happens? We have given you the option. You can select all the options. You can ignore special characters. You can ignore spaces. You, you can compare left seven letters, life seven letters, or, or you can go for entire tick marks of the list. You can tick mark entire list and accordingly software will provide you the probable mismatch or probable match, whatever the case may be. So I have this ready-made report in Excel. It is very easy to explain in Excel. So I will be showing this. Uh, so instead of what happened in other GST filing software, you have to upload everything in the cloud or you have to upload everything in that software. But here, other way around work is there. You have to download .json file. Thereby, you can maintain the confidentiality of client data. Uh, so uh, there are two, three reports actually. One is summary. So I will be explaining summary at the end. First report is JSON reconciliation. So now one thing with JSON file is that JSON file contains only GST number. So what we do, we compare this GST number in tally data either with GST numbers or PAN numbers of the ledger master. Then we capture the ledgers and then we capture the invoices, then we compare the details. But suppose either GST number or PAN number is not there in tally, we are not able to compare. So our status will be there. In, so there are five headings are available. GST PAN not found, invoices are not there in tally, match found, mismatch found, and problem match found. So what is GST not found? So this is the, these are the ledgers. So very difficult right now because we don't have any GST or PAN number in tally. We are not able to find out the uh, party. If you don't, if you are not able to find out the party, we are not able to reconcile the data for two. So that's why it is very important to update GST and PAN in tally. So this is the first option. Second option is invoice not found. This means we have found out the GST number. We have found out the party from tally also. We have got invoice number also, but in tally no invoices are present. So entries are not there or invoice number is not there. So that is a problem. So you have to update everything in tally. Then match found. Now we have found out the GST number, party, even invoices also matching, and the taxable amount in tally and GST also matching. Now there is an option. We have given GST roundup figure option. Right now I have used rupees two. So up to difference of two rupees, it will be shown as match. Any single paisa difference more than two rupees will be shown as mismatch. Now this feature is provided because one of the PA is having a tally company uh, with the turnover of 930 crores. So they have used tallies in a such way that it works very flawlessly and they are working with 930 crores turnover. Now, what happened? They have asked us like up to 150 rupees, we don't bother. We don't go for uh, follow up of the parties because following of those parties cost us more than 150 rupees. So you provide some kind of thing where up to 150 rupees, we will be considered this as match only. So accordingly, depending upon your audit maturity, you can select the rounding of option. Like in this case, I have used rupees 2. I can use 10, 50 as per the requirement of audit maturity. Uh, so whenever the mismatch is there, like in this case, mismatch means any difference more than 2 rupees. Now you can say in, even in taxable amount, there is a difference. So naturally, there will be difference in GST amount also. So these are the mismatches are there. Last thing is our USB probable match. Very important. What is probable match? So we have found out the GST number party. Now original invoice from JSON file is CM44398. But in tally, it is written only 44398. Or here you can see PUN1819. So here there is a space, PUN space 1819. Classic case is this one. Original number is PRI oblique 1819-2186, but actually only 2186 is written in tally. Still software has captured and shown under probable match because amount is matching. 
date is, the amount is matching date is matching month is matching party is matching everything is matching only thing is invoice number is not matching but some of the letters right, right letters left letters are matching so it has considered under probable match okay similarly second report is entirely not in jason means we are capturing we are considering this as a credit but uh, party has not shown this uh, against our gst number so we have to take the follow up the follow up with these parties ask them to update the return so that you will get the credit for these details okay now there is a question asked uh, how to satisfy ourselves that you have consider all the gst related entries so this reconciliation of reconciliation is given from our side this is the total gst amount from jason and this is the total gst amount from tally and there is a the difference between the two to like 92925 now this is reconciled we are not able to reconcile because there is no gst or pan this is the amount or invoices we are not able to find out this is the amount now there is a mismatch in jason means tally is having correct amount but jason amount is wrong or there is a mismatch in tally means jason is having correct amount but there is a mistake in tally and in tally not in jason so formula is a plus b plus c minus d minus c and you can see there is a rounding of difference of 2 rupees only this means we have consider all the gst entries nothing is missed from our side and uh, summary is given how much amount of jason is, uh, match amount is found or how much probable match is found now similar basis gst to be return is there uh, report will be there so i am not going to into details of that so these are the important reports from ledger vision from our side uh, let's see how ledger fusion works then we can have a question answer or suggestion related detail uh, conversation so let's open the ledger fusion ledger fusion works on similar basis just like ledger vision it pulls data but it pulls only closing and opening balances and debit and credit details so there are two options available uh, from tally side either you can have a single tally company having previous year data and current year data or there can be two different tally companies one is a, so split data is there there can be a different tally company for previous year and there can be different tally company in current year now this can be possible that previous year tally company is erp9 and current year tally company is in prime in that case you have to migrate previous year data into prime okay uh, now you have to select the company you have to select the current year over here and you have to pull the current year data so you have to select the appropriate company in tally an appropriate period in tally as well and you have to match the company and period in here in ledger fusion also and you have to pull the data now i have already pulled the data so i am not going to pull the data again to save the time and while pulling previous year data again very important you have to select the previous year company in tally and you have to change the period in tally to previous year normally the mistake is done by user that they change the company but they don't change the they don't change the period so the previous year is automatically selected over here by the software but in tally you have to manually change it to previous year then you have to pull the data now what happened in some of the cases like you have to provide the tentative balance sheet to banks etc you don't want comparative figures of previous year you want to have a balance sheet of current year only so the, the option is there you can tick the only current year balance sheet and you will get the current year balance sheet only now in this case you can see we can prepare the current year balance sheet with only single tally company the option is with you that schedule 3 is there partnership from individual hof is there uh, trust aop bi will be there in next month now if you want to go for consolidation of balance sheet that option is also there you have to open all the tally companies means head office and branches uh yes ma'am any question so we will discuss at the end if you want if you permit me okay yeah so i was there if you are having a, a group company you can open all the uh, say head office and all branches in same tally and then we will be pre preparing the uh, consolidated balance sheet now for the knockout purpose there there is a separate option i will be showing this in uh, configuration only you have to provide the unique identification number to the ledgers which are required to be knock out against each other and then balance sheet will be provided on consolidated basis so right now just focus on this schedule 3 balance sheet so suppose you don't want current year balance sheet you can leave 
you can uh, keep the box until if you want current or balance sheet only you can tick the box because it is a private limited company i have selected schedule 3 and there is a option because schedule 3 as per schedule 3 updated requirements uh, depending upon the turnover you can you have to select the rounding of details so in this case for demo purpose i am going for rupees in 100 so there is a the option you can have normal amounts or rupees in 100 rupees in 1000 lakhs or crores i am going for rupees in 100 now in case of this company there is only one classes of share so you have to decide how many classes of shares are there you can write down the number of classes of shares and only two promoters are there okay and now when you say download ledger configuration i have already downloaded the configuration so i am saving the time now what is the configuration configuration means it is a excel file with opening and closing balances so it is actually a opening closing file balance only nothing else but some added features like in this case you can see there are some questions asked now this is the information which is not available in tally right like the name address team number or name of the director dean of the director designation of the director okay now this is the older configuration but for demo purpose i am showing this configuration uh, then firm name or the address of the firm contact detail if are in mrn ud in place of signature time date etc and again the authorized capital related details the your uh, equity share capital related details and very important promoter share holding details so you have to ask question answer this questions then that will be taken care in balance sheet now you can see this is the opening closing trial balance nothing else you will get ledger group you will get sub group 1 sub group 2 and ledgers so there can be hierarchy in this case what happened in current liabilities there are sundry creditors in sundry creditors there are sundry creditors for supply and in sundry creditors for supply there is a ledger now in this case what happened in current asset only debtors are there and directly ledgers are there so depending upon the hierarchy columns are generated by the software and you will get the opening and closing balances for current and previous year now there is a list provided by mc21 like what should be note 1 what should be note 2 and what should be the sub notes for note 2 what should be sub notes for note 3 all the details are there huge list is there now if i say you have to manually map everything in excel you will not use this software so software is very intelligent it is automatically mapping everything like in case of sundry creditors it is mapping uh, as trade payables or in case of sundry data it is mapping is that trade receivable so if you go to this drop down you will see that software has mapped everything it has mapped short term provisions fixed asset long term loans everything is automatically mapped by the software now you have to take care for some of the things like most of the times i have seen that there is a spelling mistake in case of deferred tax so you have to see whether it has correctly mapped then you have to see whether all the assets are classified because we have given the detailed list of asset but there are some kind of machinery we don't know if the asset is named in the name of the machinery's original name then software is getting confused so you have to see like suppose if i go to this fix assets over here then you have to see whether software has given category to each and every asset there should be either software computer office equipment furniture not able to understand what kind of accumulated depreciation this or what kind of asset is this in that case you have to manually intervene and change the details okay so right now it is in office equipment only so some of the requirements are there but it is one time configuration once you configure everything it will be saved in the system once you save you have to save and close the configuration and then you have to go to this upload configuration once you upload the configuration you have the option with you okay so if you want detail view you can tick if you want condense view you can untick now while preparation of balance sheet also i think my So my screen share is correctly going on. Yes. Acha. So sorry. I thought my I have lost the connection. Okay. So while preparation of balance sheet, there is an the option. Once you say prepare balance sheet.
Yeah. So there is the option. Suppose you have finalized everything in tally. Say, suppose you have calculated your deferred tax, your income tax, or current tax, or MAT, whatever the case may be, or you have calculated your uh, depreciation of company law or depreciation as per income tax. Only thing is, you have entered everything in tally, just Excel balance sheet is pending, you can say okay. But suppose you have not calculated anything, you can tick and you will get the option. The software will calculate MAT or current tax for you, or depreciation as per income tax or company law or deferred tax. Okay. You have to just say OK and software will prepare the balance sheet. I have ready made output over here. So this is the Excel based output. The basic cover page is there. And you can write down the number over here of the annual report because we don't know the number. All the details are there. Now in sheet one, it is a management representation later. Okay. So standard pointers are there. Updated as per recent requirement. But you can go through, you can alter, you can change because everything is in Excel only. And you can get it signed from management. Now, balance sheet is there, very important report. So you can see there are hyperlinks. You can jump to notes. And again, you can jump back to balance sheet. So this is the feature. You can see the, all the linking, all the formulas are there. Nothing is hidden from our side. Okay. So the presentation is a standard format. You will get all the signatory details over here. Okay. So balance sheet is there. Then PNL account is there. Again, you have hyperlink, scene number is there. So standard presentation required by schedule three is there. Now all the notes are given one below the other. So because you must have seen we have answered some of the questions and accordingly the authorized capital related note is prepared by the software or issued capital related notes. Okay, so all the details are there. Now, in case of significant accounting policies and notes, Standard pointers are given, you can update, you can add your findings, you can change as per your requirement. Uh, then very important thing, all the disclosures. Now I'm struggling with these disclosures right now because what is happening, we are pulling the data for current and previous year only and they are asking us the details for less than one year, less than one to two year, two to three year and more than three years. So we are working on that, how to capture the data and provide aging analysis for this. Right now, we are providing you only blank details, but other than that, some of the details which are not available from Tally, like in this case, title deeds of immovable property not held in the name of company. Very difficult. It is not available from Tally. You have to manually add, but I have given the details. If anything is applicable, you can fill in the blanks, or otherwise, you can delete the details or uh, index of charges or details of Benami property, etc. All the details are there. Now, ratio analysis is there. So you can see current ratio. Debt equity ratio, debt service coverage ratio. This is blank. I will, uh, I will let you know why it is blank. Then return on equity share ratio, inventory turnover ratio, trade receivable turnover ratio, uh, then trade payable turnover ratio. Net. So all the ratios are there. Now, why DSCR is blank? Because to calculate the DSCR, we need the exact amount of principal repayment during the year. Now, what is happening? Because we are pulling only opening and closing balances, we are not able to calculate the DSCR. If I want I can calculate the DSR, but I want to ask some of the questions and you have to answer those questions in configuration, then only I can. But for answering those questions, you have to go to tally. Instead of that, you, have, you can directly calculate everything in tally and uh, you can write down the amount. That's why it is kept as blank. So ratio analysis is there. You will get all signatory details and it is an indirect method cash flow. So you will get operating activities. You will get investing activities and financing activities. So cash flow is there. Now, because we want to calculate income tax, this allowance is there. Now you have to keep in mind, if you are using rupees in 100, then you have to add amounts in rupees in 100. If you are using rupees in 1000, then you have to add rupees in 1000. So the blank details are given from the findings of ledger vision or from your own findings, you can go on writing the disallowances. You have to write down the disallowances in, in front of respect to sections only. And that the total will be taken care, uh, total will be considered while calculation of income tax. Again, in case of income tax, you have to, firstly, we will calculate MAT for you. But while calculation of the income tax, you have to firstly select the rate applicable to the company, whether it is 15%, 22%, 25 30 And then you have to calculate depreciation as well. So if you don't calculate depreciation, you will not get deferred tax credit, you will not get current tax. So for 
company lot appreciation we have given you the template so you can see because it is the first year we don't know the purchase details etc you can fill in the blanks or even if you don't want to use this template you are having your own template from previous year you can copy paste that template over here just then you have to provide the linkage over here okay so accordingly software will prepare the depreciation in case of it depreciation you have to just write down the opening wdb over here and software will calculate you depreciation only thing is that addition and we have considered all addition for before six months so for first 180 days we have considered the addition we have to see whether all the additions are because as you know we are putting only opening closing balance we don't know the dates of additions and deletion but we have given the asset addition deletion details in laser vision so from there you can decide whether the addition is before 180 days or after 180 days you can add all the details over here and accordingly you will get correct depreciation accordingly deferred tax will be calculated and accordingly income tax will be calculated and all the twofold effects will be given to balance sheet and p and l and your balance sheet will be tallied now in case of non corporate assets right now uh, the same presentation is there only thing is uh, the p and l and balance sheet is in horizontal format in next week only the option of horizontal or vertical will be there according according to your option the presentation will be there if you want vertical vertical balance sheet you will get vertical balance sheet if you want horizontal balance sheet you will get health. everything else is same even we will calculate amt for you also so all the features are same even we can calculate 234 a b c also while calculation of income tax so this is the laser fusion uh, here we will get individual huf schedule 3 uh, this is all from my side if anybody is having any questions or any suggestions we can have the discussion Achha, one thing from my side is pending that this is our website laser vision at gmail laser vision uh, laser vision dot in and this is the overview page here you will get our uh, youtube channel from where you can see the videos total video is also there and feature wise small videos of two or three minutes are also there so that when you want to try it on your own you can go through these videos and you can understand how software to work so this is the videos these are the videos okay so small videos are there and again if you want to download the you can download it from here you can you have to just fill in the details of google format and you will get to download the laser vision from here and if you want to download laser fusion that option is over here you can try laser fusion forever so this is from my side uh, if anybody is having any questions or suggestions we can have the discussion also Members, if you are having any doubts or anything that you please uh, uh, case and also, yourself and ask the questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any question? Sneeranjanji, nothing. Achha. So there will be questions if you try to use demo version, then only you will have the questions. But if mm -hmm. any suggestions are there, if anything missing from our side, uh, we can mm -hmm. update uh, accordingly. And what is the cost of the software? Okay. So uh, right now, the current uh, there are two options for laser vision, single user and multi-user. So single user is for 15,000 and multi-user maximum us users are allowed in multi-user is 20 and it will work on your remote desktop, VPN, cloud, or any kind of software uh, networking solution. And in case of laser vision, the cost is 10,000 and 20,000. But uh, as you have given me such a good opportunity from our side, there will be 40% discount on the prices. So you can decide if you, you have to go for single or multi-user and accordingly we can decide the deal. 40% so is the discount from our side on the prices. How much cost for laser vision, laser fusion, sir? Laser fusion is 10,000 for single user and 20,000 for multi-user. Okay. On that, you will get 40% discount. Okay. Fine. So anything, so this, huh? this tool is for India S also? Yeah, we are working, we are updating our Ledger Fusion for India S also. Uh, Ledger Fusion was launched two, three months back only. 
so many features are are there that those will be coming in updates only so you will get in days related details also so even we are working on caro also but i have seen that there are 21 points from caro only 6 to 7 points are directly related from tally everything else the information should be taken from outside resources only so we are working on something so that you will get ready made caro report audit report tax audit report may be there so we are working on the updates so is it possible from the balance sheet to directly link it to the income tax websites like uh, yeah. uh, so we are we are having a word yeah yeah bin man and company are having word with them we are working for the connectors with them also so that will be there in short uh, updated version only uh, because we have to take permission from their side also so we are having word with them so that will be there because it is in excel based only na so within a click only you will be updating everything in uh, the filing software so that will save our time and energy also sir is the there price renewal fees of year wise yeah right now the renewal fees are 50% of deal amount whatever deal we are having i am trying to reduce the uh, prices over the period whenever my sales will increase uh, i will be passing on the benefit to everybody and again we are working for tie with icci if that happens then we, we can have great discount in all the because cases. that is the recurring cost which will be yeah. normally more than the initial cost correct so why the recurring cost is higher from my side because i am selling this software to chartered accountants only you can understand if like tally if tally selling to all over the world and also chartered accountants also they can discount but i am selling to the members only that's why right now it is very high but surely it will be reduced in the coming days sir what what is the back end uh, platform that you have used to develop this tool yeah so it is sql lite and dot net so data uses database uses sql lite and it is developed in dot net sql lite yeah so originally we are planning up go to go for tdl but there are limitation for tdl and we want to expand the applicability to other softwares like zoho quickbook sap also so we have We are developing a standalone, separate desktop-based software. Original idea for going for web-based software also was there, but I wanted to have a data uh, data confidentiality is very important, so that's why it is designed on desktop-based. So once it is installed at your end, we don't have any control on the software. We don't know what amount of data you have pulled. We don't know what is the details of the data you have pulled. So it is very confidential at your end. The confidentiality depends on the security measures used on your system only. And so again, will it get prepared automatically for comparatives also? Sorry, comparative financials. Uh, the there will be a separate tool. Uh, actually, there was separate tool of uh, of AMIs, but now we are embedding that tool in Ledger Vision only. So there are around thirty forty uh, re uh, re uh, reports are there, which will provide you all AMIs related. So comparative monthly comparative of current and previous year or entire years comparison will be there. There are multiple reports. There are around thirty seven reports for AMIs. so that will provide you all the details whatever the retail, details you want from current year or previous year everything will be there so here two type of software one is ledger vision second one is ledger fusion am i right yes yes sir ledger vision for only for scrutiny kind of scrutiny purpose ledger, and ledger fusion is for balance sheet purpose balance sheet preparation mm -hmm. why they are kept separated because somebody want only ledger vision somebody want only ledger fusion so and the technology use is different na in one case we are pulling entire data mm -hmm. and in one case we are using only opening closing balances and debit credit also so the tech, the code written is very different man so that's why so that's very good uh, narinjan sir thank you yes, sir. very much yes, now sir. i request our uh, uh, secretary sir uh, because you have taken lot of pains and explained everything sure, right. and uh, so really it is useful but at the same time but you would have involved this demonstration <laughs> yes, yes. because we thought that uh, the entire is a uh, tally but uh, ledger vision uh, demo that we do know but uh, you know thank you very much <clears throat> yes sir for taking this uh, uh, pains and explain and uh, now i request uh, our secretary sir anirban prasad say what a thanks
before uh, before anir banpal <coughs> hello yes sir sir i was uh, i think one some member wants to speak sir yeah anir this is kesro sir please sir please go kesro sir yeah nirandra sir i am using so, this software for last 3 years yes, okay sir. now we are very comfortable with that because uh, nowadays article students are scarcity okay Sorry. and it is replacing if you take the article student cost it is nothing else okay very minimal yes. compared with article student cost okay and uh, the software is very useful and these people are developing software day by day and are taking so many advancements and uh, i don't know some features i learned from this day today out of this software yes, thank you niranjan yes sir i will call you and i will solve your query about that you have written in the question box yeah. so I, i will show you on in person okay yeah. thank you bye go to anirban yeah thank you sir thank you student sagar Uh, good evening dear members uh, on behalf of the members of vishakhapatnam branch and the managing committee of the vishakhapatnam branch i would like to thank uh, c niranjan oka garu for uh, having taken up this session and uh, for having explained to us his software and how it interacts with the tally and how it helps in you know conducting the audits uh, we really thank you for having spared your time in explaining to the members the utility of the software and uh, we would like to thank you on behalf of the members of the vishakhapatnam branch sir thank you so much thanks sir thank you thanks, good night sir.